a Wikivideo Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Suicide of Jacintha Saldana. Jacintha Saldana was a British Indian nurse who worked at King Edward VII's hospital in the city of Westminster, London. On the 7th of December 2012, she was found dead by suicide, three days after falling for a prank phone call as part of a radio stunt. In the prank call, the hosts of the Australian radio program Hot 30 Countdown, broadcast on the Southern Cross Stereo owned station 2 Day FM in Sydney, called Saldana's Hospital and impersonated the Queen and the Prince of Wales inquiring about the health of the Duchess of Cambridge, who was a patient there at the time. Saldana fell for the hoax and transferred the call to the nurse looking after the Duchess. Saldana's suicide led to public outrage, including in Saldana's home country against those responsible for perpetrating and broadcasting the prank. Despite numerous calls for legal action, no charges were laid. Background of Saldana Saldana was 46 years old at the time of her death. She was born in Mangalore, India, and had lived in Oman for several years before moving to England in approximately 2002. In December 2012, she was staying in nurses quarters at her London workplace for the sake of convenience, while her husband, their 16-year-old son, and their 14-year-old daughter resided in Bristol. The family initially reported to the press that Soldania did not have any history of mental illness or depression. However, multiple news sources later revealed that this was not Saldana's first attempt at suicide. Noting she had attempted suicide on two previous occasions and was taking antidepressant medication. Prank Call On 2 December 2012, St. James Palace announced that Catherine, Duchess of Cambridge, was pregnant and had been admitted to King Edward VII's hospital in London due to hyperemesis gravidarum, or, severe morning sickness. On 4 December, at about 5.30 a.m. London time, or 4.30 p.m. Sydney time, the hosts of the Hot 30 Countdown radio program, Mel Greig and Mike Christian, called the hospital and spoke to Saldonia, impersonating Elizabeth II, Greek said, Oh hello there, could I please speak to Kate please, my granddaughter. Saldana responded, Oh yes, hold on mom, and transferred the call to the Duchess's nurse, who spent approximately two minutes speaking with Greek as well as Christian, the latter impersonating Prince Charles. The hosts used what were later described as ridiculous comedy accents. The stunt was broadcast on 5 December, after it had been cleared by the radio station's lawyers. When the hospital chief executive John Lofthouse learned of the prank call, he condemned it as an act of journalistic trickery that no nurse should have to deal with. The CEO of Southern Cross Osterio, Rhys Holleran, later said that station officials had made at least five attempts to contact the two nurses in the recording prior to greenlighting the call for broadcast. On 6 December, the radio station issued a brief apology for any inconvenience caused by their actions, although Christian continued to promote the royal prank on Twitter. Neither Saldana nor the other nurse was disciplined or suspended by the hospital. Street. James Palace also indicated that they did not blame the nurses for their part in the incident. Death On the morning of 7 December 2012, Soldania was found dead by security and other staff in her nurses' quarters at the hospital. She had died by hanging, and also had injuries to her wrist. It was reported that Saldana had left three handwritten notes, one of which blamed the radio stunt for her death. Another note discussed her wishes for funeral arrangements, while the third was directed at her employer, criticizing their handling of events that preceded the prank call. Southern Cross Osterio Following news of Saldana's suicide, Osterio CEO Rhys Holleran said that Greek and Christian were both deeply shocked and would not return to their radio show until further notice. A day later, as advertisers boycotted or threatened to boycott the station, Two Day FM suspended all advertising indefinitely. On the 10th of December, Greek and Christian gave their first interviews since Saldana's death, telling nine networks a current affair and seven networks today tonight that they were still badly shaken over the tragedy. Advertising on Two Day FM resumed the 13th of December, with Osterio announcing that it would donate the remainder of station advertising proceeds for 2012. 
a minimum of 500,000 Australian dollars to a memorial fund to benefit Saldana's family. Austereo also cancelled its annual Christmas party for employees in Sydney and donated the funds for the party to the non-profit organisations Beyond Blue and Lifeline. On 27 January 2013, Austereo announced that Hot 30 Countdown was cancelled. Christian returned to work in February and won Austereo's Top Jock Award in June 2013 for his work on Fox FM in Melbourne, while Grieg remained off-air. Grieg later sued Austereo for failure to provide a safe workplace. The lawsuit was settled in December 2013. As part of the settlement, Austereo made a public statement that Grieg was not responsible for the decision to air the hoax call and had suggested that it be edited before broadcast. Grieg found work in advertising after leaving Austereo, but in 2016 returned to radio work in Wollongong, south of Sydney, in India. The burial function for Saldania was held on 17 December 2012 in the village of Sherva in Karnataka, India. More than 1,000 people attended the mass and burial ceremony, including a minister of Karnataka state, a former central minister, and other state functionaries. Several Karnataka dignitaries also visited Saldana's mother, who lives in Mangalore with Saldana's siblings. Dozens of students staged a demonstration in front of the British High Commission in New Delhi, carrying banners demanding justice for Jacintha. The chief minister of Karnataka expressed concern over the back-to-back -back deaths of Saldana and Savita Halapanava. Both women of Karnataka origin working abroad, and wrote letters to the Indian Prime Minister urging him to take steps to ensure the safety of Indian citizens abroad. R.J. Bulaji, based in Chennai, Dharmal Naru, discontinued his radio show Cross Talk, where he made prank calls to unsuspecting victims in response to Saldana's death. Legal Action As part of their investigation into the death, the Metropolitan Police Service in London contacted the New South Wales Police Force in Sydney. However, on 28 December 2012, the New South Wales Deputy Police Commissioner said that there had been no formal request from UK police to interview Grieg and Christian, and that it seemed unlikely any charges will be laid. British prosecutors confirmed in February 2013 that they would not be pressing charges against the RJs. Although Grieg and Christian may have committed offences under Britain's Data Protection Act 1998 and Malicious Communications Act 1988, prosecution was deemed to not be in the public interest, because it would not be possible to extradite the Australians and because, however misguided, the telephone call was intended as a harmless prank. On 13 December 2012, Australian media watchdog Australian Communications and Media Authority launched an inquiry to assess whether the radio station had breached the conditions of their broadcasting license. In September 2013, it was reported that ACMA had prepared a confidential preliminary report that found 2Day FM had acted illegally by broadcasting the hoax phone call without consent. Southern Cross Austereo was seeking to block the report's release arguing that ACMA did not have standing to make a criminal finding. A federal court judge sided with ACMA in November 2013, but was reversed by a decision of the full bench of the Federate Court in March 2014. ACMA subsequently appealed to the High Court, which agreed in August 2014, to hear the case. In its report, which was released the 22nd of April 2015, ACMA found that Today FM had breached the Australian Commercial Radio Code of Conduct by broadcasting a statement of an identifiable person without her consent and that they had treated her in a highly demeaning or highly exploitative manner. ACMA is yet to consider formally what sanctions should apply. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like to know more?